Good afternoon, Internet. It is I, Eric Arnold, sometimes known as the Big E. Here it is. Oh, June 2nd? June 2nd? I think it's a Tuesday here in the sports barn here in eastern lockdown Pennsylvania. Uh, I think the title of uh, today, or what do we, I didn't even put it up there. Uh, Chicago White Sox, as we grind our way through the, uh, through the MLB. This is team, what, 16? 16 to 30? Believe it or not, some good news, I think it's actually going to happen. I think we're actually going to have some kind of baseball. Um, it looks like the owners have come off their pay reduction demands. Now it seems like the only thing left to, uh, to argue out is a number of games. Uh, the owners want as few as possible. The players want as many as possible. And, you know, you just pick the number in the middle. Uh, they'll have some huge tournament at the end of this, quote, season. Uh, so, you know, you'll have baseball. It'll be baseball. It, it, it'll be kind of like, you know, going out to eat right now in uh, semi-lockdown America. Well, all right, they're serving me food. It's not the same. You know, I, I, I have to beg to get a little salt packet. Uh, no salt shakers allowed. A lot of places it's paper plates and uh, paper uh, uh, plastic utensils. Uh, but uh, I'm out. You know, I'm free. So uh, it's better than nothing. Yeah, and, and that's what I'm sure what baseball's going to feel like. I'm hoping that fans are allowed back in the stands sooner rather than later. I think this protest stuff is put to you know, showing the lo uh, a lockdown to be the lie that it is. You know, unless there's just suddenly this wave of sick people, and frankly, I don't even care at that point. Uh, they don't have an answer what to do anyway. This vaccine's going to take forever and a day. There's no guarantee it's even going to happen or it will work. Uh, you, the disease really just isn't that deadly. I think that we're pretty much at that point where we've come to that conclusion. I think the latest number I saw from the CDC is 0.2%, uh, uh, maybe 0.3%. Normal flu is 0.1%, so you're talking something that might be twice as deadly as the normal flu. Uh, anyway, I talked to a friend of mine about you know the looting and the rioting and whatnot, he's unemployed. Uh, he's looking for a job. Uh, he had a brilliant idea, and I hope he figures this out because I think it's a great way to make some money. Uh, I'll call him uh, Jeff Blue, uh, not his real name, but uh, Jeff Blue's idea was he knows that some of these protesters are being paid. I mean, it's pretty obvious that. You know, night after night, you know, you're seeing these people not from whatever area that uh, they are living in. In other words, here's a person in Indianapolis that lives in Kansas City. Well, who's paying for these people to be where they're at? You know, these obviously aren't people without jobs. So where's the money coming from? So somebody's paying some of these protesters. So figures Jeff Blue, and I agree. Uh, we figure it's some foreign government, you know, whether it be Russia or China. You know, that's my favorite. China. You know, the Democrats all go, Russia, Russia, this is a Russian plot. Oh, yeah? I say it's a Chinese plot. I got as much evidence of that as you have it's a Russian plot. Maybe it's a, you know, maybe it's a New Zealand plot or uh, something like that. Who knows? But somebody's paying these protesters, so his idea is he wants to get on the payroll to protest. I said, so you're going to go out there and bust, up, bust shit up and set fires to churches? He's like, no, I'm not going to do dick. I'm just going to sit home and get paid. He's like, you don't think they're going to have attendance or something? You don't think they're going to like, hey, where's, where's Jeff Blue? Where's that new guy? He's supposed to be here. We're, we're scheduled to fuck shit up in another hour. Where's he at? You don't think they're going to take attendance? He, he thinks they're so disorganized they won't notice that he's not there and he's just going to get paid. 
and then if they do call him out on it, he'll just make so he'll just lie. He'll just make shit up. Uh, yeah, you saw that guy there uh, coming out of the coming out of the Apple Store with the giant uh, flat screen TV with the mask on. That was me. That was me. So you know, come on, man, get off my back. I think he's a decent chance he could hook this up. So I'm kind of hoping he tries. Uh, he, he's the one that had the idea one time, that show, that great race or whatever, where I guess two people race around the world to different places. He said, I'm going to get on that show, and I don't want to compete. It's like, what do you mean? When they say go, and I guess they start at an airport or something, and says, I just want to go to the airport bar and start drinking. I said, but, but, I thought, that'd be pretty funny. I said, yeah, I could see that. Just, you know, you'd be off in one episode, but just refuse to compete. Just go right to the airport bar. <laughs> so I hope Jeff Blue ends up working for George Soros and takes him as a ghost employee. I think that'd be funny. All right. The Chicago White Sox. I'm getting bored myself with this shit. Well, but baseball's coming. Now, I did figure out who we were missing here, of course. It is Minnesota. Now, I thought about that, and I thought I should apologize. You know what? Fuck them. I mean, it's their city that started all this. They're poorly supervised police. So, screw you, Minnesota. You're lucky we're going to talk about you at all. Right now, we're going to talk about the Chicago White Sox. Um... Normally in the American League West, they will be part of this giant central division. This historically has been a terrible team. Um, last time this team had a winning record was 2012. Uh, the last time they were in the playoffs was 2008. Uh, you can probably count the number of times in this team's history, and it's history. And this thing goes back into the 19th century. How many times these guys have been in the playoffs? Probably on two hands. Uh, it, it, it's been a really bad, I don't know, maybe God has cursed these guys for what happened in 1919. Uh, for those of you uh, uh, millennials or people from a different country. In 1919, the Chicago White Sox threw the World Series. They took money from gamblers and did not try their best and lost on purpose. Uh, and it's been one of the biggest stains in the history of baseball. And baseball's pretty stained, it's history. Uh, there's some pretty brilliant history, some beautiful history in baseball. There's also some ugly history. And that was one of the ugly chapters uh, of the whatever, now 150 years of baseball. So, not a good team, but uh, Vegas likes them at 84.5. They say this is going to be the year, oops, smudge, this is going to be the year that these guys are going to break 500. Uh, they have a lot of young talent. They have a lot of young talent that's coming, getting better. Uh, they managed all 72 wins last year. They had injuries. Uh, you know, I don't think we can do more than do this to them. You know, I, I, I don't know there's a lot of value there. Uh, this is one of these flavor of the month, hot teams, how exciting, lots of young talent. This is a team that historically sucks. And I don't think you make a lot of money trying to catch that bad franchise, which suddenly, you know, becomes good. That suddenly wipes away a hundred years of shittiness and, and suddenly becomes good. So, I, uh, you know, we'll, we'll mark them around 500 just the way our Vegas has them. I don't think this is going to be a team that's going to win the Central Division. You know, I don't think this is a team that's going to beat the Cardinals, you know, for example. Um, so, uh, that's where we're going to put them. That's what we got here. The Indians are a good team. They'll be next. Like I said, baseball's coming. It is coming. I, I, I just pray to God, I mean, that they're not stupid enough to, like, push us back to the end of July. It's like, Chris, right now you guys get the run of the field, 
the faster you get out there, the better. And you're, you'll be the only game in town. Uh, that's why I keep telling Mark, my brother, about hockey. It's like, what are these idiots waiting for? Hockey is such a, you know, afterthought in this country, and they could have the run of the field get out there. Nobody's out there. You could do this. And, you know, everybody's just dragging their feet, dragging their feet. I mean, I think why they're dragging their feet is they think there's a real possibility that fans might be back sooner rather than later. You know, I, they watch TV. Gary Bettman watches TV. Adam Silver watches TV. And they see huge crowds of people running around out in the streets of America and nobody doing anything. And if nobody ends up getting sick in huge numbers... I would be pushing like hell for why in the hell are we not allowed to have crowds? Why can we not go to church? Why can we not have weddings? Why can we not have funerals? What the fuck is this bullshit? I just watched a crowd of 100,000 people burn a church down, but I can't go to church. Fuck that. So I'm hoping for that. That's what I'm hoping for. You know, let's hope the virus just goes away. I mean, Jesus Christ. And if it doesn't go away, let's hope the media has just found something else to talk about because they've blown this damn thing way out of proportion and it's ridiculous. Uh, I'd better sign off now before I get into an even worse mood and really get going. So we'll talk again.